And this one here is stubborn too because it doesn't want to flip up when it gets to the end of the tape. So I try to get them on a tape on the computer. I've done this class about five or six times in this church. It's been a long time. Have you ever been it for? I've tried five or six times. Yeah, <laughs> all right. I'm going. Yeah, five or six times I've taught church history. Uh, John Gage was in it two times. Uh, Rod and his wife were in it two or three times in a row. Ken Blind was in it five times, I think. <laughs> and he said he learned more in the, ch in the church history class than he did any other class in theology in his life. He said that I learned more theology there than I ever learned, and I put it together. I understood it after I went through church history. Brother Mike, you learned anything? You've already you've been in my class for four or five years now, off and on. I don't know if it's been a it's been, been a long time. Anyway, it's been a long time. I'm learning, but who can like tell what every Hebrew name means? You know, when you ask, them, what does that mean? I never let my class be passive. I keep them involved. Every day is a test day. All right, every day is a test day. Even even now, last Wednesday night we we talked from the Book of James, but we taught Hebrew from the book of James because oh, yeah, James loses a lot of Hebrew. What? It was good too. We taught more Hebrew than we did Greek last Wednesday night. What's the title of your class? It was the book of James. The book of James? We're teaching the book of James from Greek on Wednesday. But there are a lot of Hebraisms in there and, and we've done that in all the classes that I've taught. I've done. i taught Greek here almost 10 years now. So it's been a lot. About eight different names. Hebrew words Yeah, the words for sin. For sin. Word for sin. All right. And. Uh, Could you tell us everybody's name? I don't know anybody. Uh, this is Bill. That's Mike. What, what is your name? Mike Uh This is David. I'm David. <laughs> and Irma. And I'm Jim. And that's Dakota. And Kevin and Leanne. And Mary Lynn, the birthday girl. And your last name is. Newton. Yeah. And what did you say about Reimer. 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 Now, Bill, Bill there, and I go back a long, long way. His wife, I was his first her, I was her first pastor when she was a little girl. <laughs> long, long time ago. That goes back quite a few years. How many? <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into our. Let's get into our uh, class now. Now we studied the, the history of mankind, and we've studied the old devil. We've uh, looked at him in Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, how that he stood against God. And then on earth we saw God set forth religion, true, pure religion, in the Garden of Eden. How do you come back to God? All right. And we saw how that uh, Cain. Uh, did not he was a tight wad and he didn't want to bring the right offering either. Not only did he want to bring, not bring the right amount, and I just remembered again, I was bringing the check for an offering in the church. I forgot it twice today. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm gonna be right there with Cain if I don't watch out. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Cain didn't divide right. He didn't give the right amount, and he gave the wrong kind of offering too. Well, and then when he was rejected by God because he didn't do it in the right order or the right amount, what did he do? We have the first religious persecution, don't we? All right. And he not only got mad because God didn't accept his idea of what he should bring, but he killed his brother. All right. And Cain, Abel was never a threat to Cain at all because he, Cain, or Abel was not the heir. He was not going to be the heir. He was not going to be the spiritual leader. Even though he was doing it, Cain had rejected the right way. And we see that the law, or the law of the firstborn, is, or, or the law, or the first, the rich, oh boy, the rejection of the firstborn, always in the Bible. Rejection of the firstborn. We're born the first time in the sin. We must be born again. The rejection of the firstborn. All the way down through, we saw humor and government. How far did we get last week? Did we get up to the law? We got up to up to the law, the law of God. 
Now, the law was not anything that was totally brand new. Back in the garden, God told mankind what was right and what was wrong. And then here in human government, when, when, uh, when Noah was preaching, he was preaching what was right and what was wrong. And then if you, how many of you had studied the book of Enoch? It's a very interesting book. Have you ever heard of it? I've read it. You've read the book? Okay. All right. That's, it's quite a book. If you read the book of Enoch, now you can go to my website, discovertheword.com, and go over to the right-hand side and it'll say the book of Enoch. Push on there and you can download the whole book of Enoch. You have it right there in your hands if you want to print it out. But if you look at the book of Enoch, now I don't know how much of the book of Enoch is inspired of God, but I know some of it is, probably a lot of it. Now the book of Enoch goes back a long time in history. Enoch was the seventh from Adam. What does his name mean, Leah? You told about the teacher. Teacher. All right, teacher. His name means teacher. All right. Now, the book of Enoch was the seventh man from Adam, wasn't he? By the way, seven in the Bible is what? The number of what? Perfection. So guess what happened with Enoch? Raptured. In, in the Bible, God always gives you two examples of something. Now, we know that the rapture is possible. The rapture of the church and all the saved here in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 7 is possible because we have two examples of it in the Old Testament. We have two people in history that did not see death that were raptured up to God. One of them was Enoch and the other one was Elijah. All right. So we have those two examples. Uh, let everything be established by two or three witnesses. How many Gospels do we have? Four Gospels. All right. How many witnesses is that? Four. All right. How many flags flew in Israel over the tribes? How many flags flew over the tribes? Hmm? Yes, that's right. Now, what are they? Well, let me see. Flags that fly over the gates, aren't North, south, east, and west. Okay, north, south, east, and west. But what face is on them? What face is on Face or image? You've got the lion. The lion. And a ram. Yeah. And a hawk. Uh, 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 a lion. A lion. Uh, eagle. Okay, an eagle. And a man. All right. And a ram. And an ox. Okay. Now correspond them to the four Gospels. How Christ would be looked at. The line of Judah. Mm-hmm. Son of man. All right. I don't know what the ox. Ox, the serpent. Okay, the serpent. The serpent, yeah. And the eagle? The eagle. Deity. All right. Deity. All right. Now that's the way it goes. I thought it, most of these have that. Do you have one of those, Brother Bill? You don't have one of those, Brother Bill? All right, now this is the only one like this. I'll tell you that much because I made this chart. And I never saw it anyplace else in, in any other book. And then uh, one of my students colored it up on the computer real good. I had one of those I hand drew, and then he put little flags on it and made it look neat. That's one thing about my book. My book that I wrote on Greek grammar. Uh, one of my students also printed that one up for me. And she was really good. Uh, what was her name? Uh, can't even think of her name right now. The one that did the Greek grammar for me. She printed it all up and typeset it. Oh, uh, for me. I want to say Grace. Uh, no, I can't think of her name now. Think of her all the time. Can't remember her name. I ought to write it down in the book. Anyway, mankind has always tried to go some other way than what God prescribed. That's, that's man. We're like billy goats. But a billy goat can, he'll climb out of it, do something. The law. The law was not something brand new. It was laid out in Scripture and in thought and in action all the way back. The first lambs and rams and, and uh, goats and uh, 
turtle doves were not, the first ones were not offered after Moses came along, were they? They were offered it way back into the garden. Now, all of those portrayed Christ in history. Now, how many of you know what this is? That's a tabernacle, all right? All the things in the tabernacle taught something about Jesus. This is historic history. Now, if you look at the tabernacle and see how uh, transitive it was, how nomadic it was, this is also a type of church of the church in the church age. All right? And then the temple was a type of the church in the millennial age. We'll get into that a little bit more. We'll get into it more. All right. Well, yes. Those are the flags that were flown over those, you know, ever in all four directions of the flag, that, and those tribes come from that Yeah. So, it, but it just said there was a banner. A banner. Yes. For the north, south, east, and west. And it tells you what was on it. And then look at the look at the epiphany in the book of Ezekiel, and look at the one in Revelation also. It tells you what was on the banner? Yeah, it tells you what was on the banner. I've only got numbers. Numbers and men and nine. Numbers what? I've only got the numbers of, like you have down here for the south. The, the flag was the red. It was red with the face of man. And you have numbers 2, 10 through 17, right? Mm-hmm. Two. And so mine just says, On the south side should be the standard of the camp of Reuben and their armies and their sons and the numbers. And then that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to cross-reference that to the other places it is too, and there's some places going to tell you that was the face of a man on it or whatever. All right, or of an eagle, you know. All right, and that little it, it'll cross-reference it. I thought I had it all down there, but I don't know because I put that I did that about seven years ago, something like that. All right, where were we? On the law. Okay, all of the things in the tabernacle pointed to the things that would happen. Every piece of wood in there in the tabernacle like the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was made out of wood, wasn't it? But what was it covered with? Gold. Gold. All right. What does wood typify in the Bible? What? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Jumped right out there. Well, that girl's got it all down. Humanity. Gold typifies what in the Bible? Deity. Okay, deity. Now, over the Ark of the Covenant, there were two angels or cherubims with their wings outstretched towards each other. And what did I say a while ago? By two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Those those were witnesses over the mercy seat. All right, the kafar, you know, the, the, the covering, that's what it was, the mercy seat. Witnesses there standing every time that sin was forgiven, two witnesses, two angels stood by. Now, if that holds true, that type, every time somebody accepts Christ as their Savior, there are two witnesses t- testifying to that also. And then we say that in, in our lives, two times there are angels present when we're saved and when we die to carry us to be with the Lord. And we get that from Luke the 16th chapter also. Now, all of these things typify the white, typifies the righteousness of Christ. The uh, silver, what's silver typify? Redemption. Brass. Brass, the brazen altar, the brass altar, judgment. All right, all of these things. Blue, heaven, all right, the scarlet, the red, the blood of Christ. All of these things. And there were five boards that stood up. What's the number of grace in the Bible? Five. Five. What did the boards stand on? The boards were made out of wood. What did they stand on? Silver sockets. Just think about all that. The beauty of this... Tip of faith, you know, of this, of these types in the Old Testament. Now let's go to about Matthew, the fourth chapter, Kadamathion, Matthew chapter four.
Now, Jesus, uh, when he came of age, we have the baptism of Jesus in, uh, in Matthew 3, uh, 13 through 17. And then in the fourth chapter, the first part of the fourth chapter, what do we have there in 1 through 11? The temptation of Jesus. All right? Now, in the, in, in the Garden of Eden, we have the first Adam. Okay? Our father, Adam. All right? Of all. He had it made, didn't he? He didn't have any stickers to step on, Brother Kevin. No thorns, no weeds to pull. Do you have any weeds to pull around your house? Yeah. All right. That's part of the curse. None of those things existed on the earth. God had planted the garden, so it was perfectly tended before it, and He gave man, He said, You protect the garden, you protect the earth, whatever. Now we have... Uh, and Adam sinned in that. With all of this garden that had been made by God, with all of the food that he wanted to eat, all of the animal creatures that were his friends, and his wife, his Isha. Isha means what? Out of man. Isha means out of man. Ish means man. Isha is out of man. All right? Out of man. So out of man he took woman and uh, gave her back to man in marriage. They became one flesh again. Took him out. He divided mankind into two and then put them back together in marriage and they became one flesh again. And then Adam wasn't doing his job and Eve got in trouble. Hmm. Talking to the Nahash. <laughs> to the snake in the garden. Now, all of that took place in a perfect world. Now let's look at Jesus and look at his life. Now he comes to a, a sinful group of people. Even the religious people were sinners. He called them hypocrites. Hypocrites. What's hypocrites mean? Huh? Uh, what does it literally mean? Two faces or something faces. Hector. When I was young and I got to see television occasionally, you know, they had television it was black and white you know kind of round looking thing but anyway uh, I'd go in there and there was this one program come on and have three masks on it and it would be something a theater alright three masks and in the Greek culture one actor would get up and act and he would carry a mask with him and he'd hold this mask in front of his face and he would have a different voice and he'd be acting acting out this one then he'd pick up another mask and do this he was a hypocrites he would perform under a mask. He was an actor. The word hypocrite means actor. That's what it means. It's an actor. Now, Jesus condemned the Pharisees and the scribes as actors. They acted, but they were not real. You were nothing but actors. Now, Jesus, uh, it says here in verse 4 and 1 that he's led up into the Spirit in the wilderness and to be tempted by the devil. In the wilderness, that is total destitute of any supporting life, except for lizards and corn toads and turtles and things. Okay, this is the bad. This is a place that, uh, like Death Valley, all right, and it's it's rough. Now he's out there, and and it says he was out there without anything to eat for forty days. I don't. Know how many of you have ever gone three days without eating? Hmm? Yeah. Ever been sick? I think well, when I was down in the hospital with that cancer surgery, I didn't eat for three or four days or five days, something like that. I couldn't remember. I, I was very thin and dehydrated, and they still were giving me all kinds of stuff through my veins. How about 40 days out there in the hot, blistering sun without anything to eat or drink? Now, that's awfully hard on a human being, isn't it? Well, here was the Son of God out there, and this is real. Now, it really happened. It was really 40 days. Really, 40 days. Now, Adam didn't have to go one day without anything to eat. It was all out there, laid out there for him. Here's the second Adam now, and he's tempted. He's out there, and he's communing with the animals, it says. Doing just exactly what Adam did in the garden. Communing with the animals. They're still his friends, but now the creatures that he created on two legs is the problem. All right? And not only the creatures, but 
the angelic forces. Here comes one of them. And he comes down and he tempts him. He says, uh, those stones out there turn them into bread. Now just remember this. Back in the Old Testament, back out here in the wilderness, how did God feed Israel? Manna. Manna. What is manna? What is it? What is it? All right, you got that one down. What is it? They didn't know what it was. Well, what did it look like? What did it look like? Coriander seed. What is coriander seed? It is a cilantro. Cilantro seeds. That's what it looked like. All right. That's exactly what it. That's what it said. It looked like coriander or cilantro seeds. So now you know what it looks like. Did you ever know that before? No. All right. Now you do tonight. You're going to go home and look up coriander seed and see what it looks like. That's what manna is. What is it? All right. He gave them manna, and he said this was their bread. Okay, and they made it into bread. And they ate it. And it sustained life. Now out there in the wilderness, the devil tells Jesus, turn this stone into bread. He was the bread of life, wasn't he? But if it obeyed the old devil, what would have happened? Was there anything wrong with Jesus performing miracles? Did he manufacture bread later on in his ministry? Yes, he did. He fed 5,000 one time and 7,000 another. Then it, uh, he took him up into a real high place and, and told him, look at all the kingdoms of the earth. Every one of these things are man's temptation today. And the same thing happened in the garden. He took him and he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. He said, all of these can be yours if you'll just bow down to me. He said, no. Now he offered them to him because who is the God of this world today? Satan. Satan. Lucifer. The rascal. All right. Then he took him up to the corner of the temple wall. How many of you ever, you've been to the Israel, Jerusalem, haven't you? You know where that temple wall is up there on the corner of Israel? Down in the Kidron Valley. It's way down there. He took him up there to the corner of that wall and he said, Jump off. The scriptures say the angels will bear you up. You won't dash one foot against a stone. Again, he didn't obey. Did Eve obey? Did she obey Satan? Yeah. Yeah. Did Adam obey Satan? Yeah. Sure he did. Did Jesus? No. No. Aren't we glad we had Jesus? Amen. All right. And then, finally, the devil went away and, and for a season did not tempt him. Did Jesus ever get tempted again? Sure. Lots of times. All through his ministry. All right. Now let's go on down a little further. How many of you have been to Israel? Have you, been to Israel? you know, have you, have you been out there near the Judean wilderness? Have you been to Israel? Mm-hmm. Well, we have, I have Jewish friends that live out in Tekoa, just south of Bethlehem, out there where the PLO live in the West Bank. Mm-hmm. But on the very edge, and Tekoa is, is Amos, Amos is ancient yes. city, mm-hmm. the ancient city, town of mm-hmm. And what was amazing is that's the beginning of that Judean wilderness. And, you know, we've all been in the desert, we've all been in scary places, but there is just something really very um, eerie about it. Eerie and very, you know, it, it's like you don't want to, you want to get out of there really fast, but it's just amazing because when you look out across that thing, it's so desolate. And I've seen a couple of good videos that have come pretty close where they kind of show that. Mm-hmm. But it's just, you, I can't imagine Jesus being there for a week, especially day and night. But yeah. It's just really something. It is so, it's like white limestone caves and just yeah. nothing forever and ever as far as you There's can. not well, any, you, you don't see any vegetation. Yeah, there. You know, only in the rainy season there's a few little clumps of grass and water pools here and there. Otherwise, it's desolate. Totally desolate. Not life-supporting. It is a wilderness. And I don't mean wilderness like up there in Alaska. I mean, it won't support life. That's the problem. Okay? Now, let's go on a little bit further. And Jesus uh, uh, is, uh, is baptized, of course, earlier. And then we have Jesus in verse 12. Wait a minute. Now back a little bit further. All right, number 17. All right. Verse number 17 in the fourth chapter. 
Verse number 17. Start right there. Who's? Are you there, Leanne? Yeah. All right. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. It also says in the New Testament that the, that the law and the prophets were until John also. The law and the prophets were until John. After that, the kingdom of God is preached. The law and the prophets were until John. Okay, But now here comes the king. This is the king of the universe here. Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1. This is the king of the universe. He has stepped into space and time in the person of Jesus Christ. John 1 and 1. You've heard me tell you about that. In beginning. It says literally, in beginning kept on being the word. The word there is a Hebraism, not a Greek idiom. When they came to the to the word in the Old Testament for the name of God, they would call him the word or the name or Adonai. All right. And what does Adonai mean? King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. Just think about that. King of kings and Lord of lords. So here is the king on the scene. Now when they come here. And Jesus begins to preach, for the kingdom of God is near. How near was it? Ugas is the Greek word. How near? Where? Right there. right there. Here he is. Here is the king. Wherever the king, king, king is, that's where the kingdom is. So Jesus came into the world. John one one says, "In beginning, kept on being. He kept or kept on being the word." In 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 uh, uh, he Genesis one one it says, "In beginnings, plural." In one of the beginnings, God created the heaven and the earth. But John 1 and 1 goes back further than that because it says, in beginning, singular. Way back in eternity, when nothing existed but God, kept on being the Jehovah. Even while being incarnate. Yes. Right. But even pre incarnate. Yeah. Way beyond in time. You, the, the King James says, follow me, or I'm sorry, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm hmm. And you said for the kingdom of God is it? Is near. Is yeah, near. the king. Is yeah. that the correct translation? The kingdom of God is near. All right. Where are we? Four and four and seventeen. Four seventeen. Hey, Basilia, Tona, Uran, on the kingdom of the heavens. It's plural heavens, by the way. Hashemayim. Uh huh. Mayim. Huh. Yeah. Plural. Mm -hmm. But this, again, Jesus is quoting the Old Testament in the. Alright, so this is the idea. It's not the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of heavens. The king of kings and the Lord of lords is here. And the second verse, or the second sentence in John 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning kept on being the Jehovah. That's what it's talking about there. That's who it's talking about. And the Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead. That's what the second part of that verse it says because he kept on being God. Mm. All right, John one fourteen. Look at this, John one fourteen. Kahalogo starts again. and the Word flesh he became. The Word Jehovah flesh he became. And what does the rest of it say? And we be out the glory of the only begotten God. John one eighteen says that he led himself out of eternity into space and time where we could see him and physically we know here is God in the flesh now. He's among us. He's going to dwell with his people. The king has come. In other words, the king has come. David, thank you for bringing that up because that brought out something very good. Another little Hebraism there. Number 18. <clears throat> Number 18. And this is where Jesus began to call out his assembly, his ecclesia. All right, this is very important. Ecclesia. <clears throat> ecclesia. Comes from two Greek words, ek and kalio. This ecclesia. This is not a new word that, that Jesus used. This is not a brand new invented word that Jesus used. What's the ecclesia? One, one's called out. That's what it means. 
But how was it used a, a thousand years before Jesus, or five hundred years before Jesus, or three hundred years before Jesus? Well, it was assembly. Huh? It, well, no. It meant assembly, but what, how was it used? In Greek history, where does the word ecclesia come? Ecclesia come from? It comes from the towns in Greek that had their. Uh... Every every state, every little state in Greek, it was a democracy. Okay. Uh, look at this, how God's churches are. All right, Every little state in the massive nation of Greece had an ecclesia. An ecclesia was an elected, called out assembly that, made, that took care of all the records of that city. They called out the draft. They, they took care of a, it was a court. Everything right there. What if the government said we need so many men out of here? They they had a draft and they went out they, uh, young people, young men, and so, so, to see who was fit as soldiers. And they also, if there was taxes to collect, the ecclesia collected the taxes that were uh, levied on that little area. Okay, that's the ecclesia. So now, when Jesus uses the word ecclesia, they knew what the basic meaning of the word ecclesia was. Okay, the basic meaning of that word. So it's not just the ones called out; it's the governing body. It's it is a it's, it's a democratic body. All right. Now that democratic body in Greece worked under a nation. Okay. Now let's look at this. Real good here now. All right, five and verse eighteen. Who was who was reading there anyway? Four Four eighteen to me. Who was reading a while ago? I was. Now, now as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. All right. Let's look at these two names, first of all. Can I ask you a question? Do you know what the Hebrew word is for Ecclesia? Well, they use the word uh, Moet. Which is uh, is the word synagogue, but they weren't the Hebrews weren't even speaking their own language when they had synagogues, and the synagogue means the place of gathering together. It's a Greek word. The Hebrew is moed, but the Greek word is synagogue. Okay. Uh, most most of the time they use the word synagogue in the Book of James. The the term synagogue. Now he's talking to the the twelve tribes that are scattered in the Book of James. But he said, when you come together, when you come together in a synagogue. All right. Uh huh. Yeah. It's the place of gathering. Synagogue is the place. The ecclesia is the assembly. All right. There's difference in that. Is it okay for me to believe that Jesus is speaking Hebrew and that they only translated it into Greek? Uh, no, no. I, I, I believe that he. There was times when he spoke Hebrew and it absolutely quoted him speaking Hebrew. If he spoke spoke Aramaic, it quoted him in Greek with Aramaic, Halafakume, and different things. Eloi Eloi Lama Sabachthani. All of this, it, it does. It, it quotes Jesus wherever he was talking, and it quotes him in that language. I believe he was speaking in Greek, Koine Greek. He was he was quoting the Septuagint most of the time. And by the way, the Septuagint uh, it was a translation. It was just about as imperfect as King James is, because <laughs> it wasn't a very good translation. I can go through in the first chapter of the Book of Genesis show you about fifty errors in the, in the Septuagint. But uh, and let's go on anyway. He was uh, uh, probably speaking Greek, but in Greek he twists Greek up. To mean what he what it means in Hebrew, if there if there is a Hebraism, just like John one and one, okay, and the whole book of Revelation, the book of Revelation is full of Hebrew grammar, Hebraism. It twists and rests Greek to the nth degree, but you have to realize these are this is for the Hebrew people. Most of the book of Revelation is for the Jews. All right, go on a little bit further now. He's walking by the uh, Sea of Galilee, and uh, what does Galilee mean? Circle. She's got all the answers. Did you notice? Huh? She she takes the teacher home. Galilee means circle. By the way, this is where all the whole. It's the road, and I can't remember the name of the road. The on something road. I can't remember the name of it. 
I lost a lot of memory in this cancer business and chemo and all that junk. I can't remember what I did before. But anyway, this was the main road that went right through there of the whole from the east to the west and the north to the south. It went right through this little area right here. So this is the main mainstream. This is the great turnpike of that day. Okay? Simon. What's the word? Shimon. Oh, Shimon. Simon. Cephas. That's rock. No. Cephas? See, yeah. It means stone. Stone. stone pebble. All right. How about Simon? One who hears. Yes, one who hears. This is very important. One who hears. All right. He who hears, let him what? Let him hear. All right. He who hears, let him hear. Simon. All right. He calls Simon. Now, how about Andrew? That name means man. Yeah, man. It means man. All right. So now we have we have Simon, which is called one who hears, and we have call him Cephas, which means stone. We call him Petros, which is stone. All right. So we have all these names here for him. All right. Yes. Ish is man. That's Hebrew. Yeah. All right. Mankind. Hebrew. Ish and Isha. Woman. Womankind. All right. Out of man. Let's go on back up here now. And we have a, a call Simon Peter. All right. One who hears. All right. And Andrew, his brother, casting uh, <coughs> a net into the sea. And they what? They were fishermen. All right. Fishermen. My wife is a good fisherman. She's a fantastic fisherman. <laughs> I took her out fishing yesterday and uh, in the uh, Pacific Ocean. We were out there on our boat, out there fishing around. And I went out there and she got out there first of all and she got scared and started whining and going on squeaking at me in a high voice and everything. And, that I, and you see, the ocean doesn't scare me too much. I mean, I really respect it. But you know what the ocean does to me, Dakota? Makes me seasick. I got seasick. Bad. I just couldn't hardly do anything. And she's out there, been the best place to fish, and she's fishing, boy. And I'm like sick. Was Dakota there with you? What? No, no, she wasn't with us. Dakota wasn't with us. Uh, Dakota, if she's sick, sick or not, she's still fishing. She's tough. But the old wimp here, I was about shot out. Well, the Lord likes fishermen, I guess. That's why he likes you so much, Marilyn, because you're a fisher girl. All right. Fish and number uh, 19. What's that say, Brother Kevin? And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I will make you to become fishers of men. All right. This is the first part of God's church. He's What's he doing with them? He's calling them out. So here he's calling them out. All right. And he's going to do what to them? Make them fishers of men. Make them fishers of men. And verse 20. Make you to become fishers of men. That's right. To become fishers of men. All right. Make you to become fishers of men. All right. Come after me, and I'm going to make you to become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. All right. And verse 21. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James. And All right. The word James should be Jacob. Okay. Jacob. All right. The son of Zebedee, Zebedee and John and his, his brother, brother in the boat with Zebedee their father. All right. And what did he do to them? Commending their nets and he called them. He called them. Ecclesia again. Called them out. Same word. This is not a brand new word now. And verse 22. Immediately left the boat and their father and followed him. All right. Immediately. Luthios. They left their boat. Having left the boat and the father of them, and they followed him. Now, just go back in culture. This is quite a thing here. Everybody, if you were... By the way, there weren't very many carpenters back then. Carpenters didn't... They, don't, they didn't basically exist. They were woodworkers. They made some table furniture and things like that. That's what they did. Jesus was probably not a carpenter. He was probably a stonemason. Every term he used was a stonemason term. All right? 
and a talk, and the stone which the builders rejected, and so on and so forth. And you list, keep looking at this. And how did they build a house? Carpenters did not build houses. Stone masons built houses. All right. Simple as that. All right. He was probably a stone mason. So now put that one in your mind. The stone mason was building the house. Build a house out of stones. What did he say he's going to build his church out of? Rocks. Rocks. All right. Living stones. All right. Who was the foundation stone that the church was built upon? Peter. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. Are you Catholic? Jesus cornerstone. The chief cornerstone. Even Peter said that. All right. Everybody can goof up now and then. All right. And then it says in verse 23, verse 23, what's it say? Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. All right. Now, this is what he, he did. Now, is that what the Messiah was supposed to do? Was that what the Messiah was supposed to do? In John the, John the fourth chapter, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Kaiwane. That's straight out of Isaiah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes. What? I, I forgot it. I already told on myself earlier, I said I was almost as bad as Cain. I forgot my offering. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I forgot it again. I'll have to do it Wednesday. Fourth chapter. All right. There's a woman at Jacob's well. All right. Now his church had been following him around. This ecclesia had been following him all over. And he goes out here, and this woman is out here. She's an ungodly woman. She's uh, had several husbands. And you know, back at the, in that period of time, a woman uh, was supposed to have one husband. And if she was a reject, she's not worth much. But this woman had several husbands, and uh, the one that she was living with, the man that she was living with right then, was not her husband, somebody else's husband. He was married to somebody else, not her, but evidently he'd run off with her and stand with her now. All right. So now he starts talking with her. He's there at Jacob's well. And uh, there was a woman that came from Samaria. And Jesus, in verse 7, asked her, uh, Let me have a drink of water. Can you get me a drink? And what did she say to him? How that you, being a Jew, asked for a drink? Yep. How did you, being a Jew, want to ask anything? They would skirt all of Samaria and go the long way around to get to Jerusalem. And now here's the Samarian. What is the Samarian? Half breed Jews. But I'm going to tell you something about these Samarians. All right. What Jew or family are they from? Jacob, Joseph's family. Ephraim and Manasseh, yes. That's it. Now just think about that for just a little while. Just think about that for a while. Jesus, in the Bible, in the New Testament, there's I think there's only one time that he ever spoke down to the Samaritans. But he spoke up and lifted them up. And just think about Joseph in the eyes of God, the rejected one. And who lifted him up? God did. And who lifts up his children? Jesus did. All right. So just think about that for just a little while. Have you ever heard that one before? <laughs> There's some beautiful things in God's Word when you trace back and, and look at these things. So here's this, uh, this descendant of Joseph. All right? The descendant of Joseph, the rejected one. Now, was she rejected by her people? Now, her actions probably got her rejected a lot, but she was rejected by her people. All right? He said, uh, give me a drink of water and... Uh, and he says, uh, you're a Jew and you ask me to drink water, which I'm, I'm a woman. And you're talking to me. Now what did the Hebrew rabbi say? Jesus would look up on a rabbi. What does the word rabbi mean? Huh? It means more than teacher. Teacher. PhD. A doctor. Doctor Jesus or whoever was the rabbi. It was the term for doctor. It was master teacher. They were, In other words, they, they were looked upon as theologians. 
master teacher doctors, all right? So you could use the word doctor right there. So it was an honor for the rabbi to call you and follow him? Yes, to follow him too, also. It was an honor to be called by the rabbi. Now here these people are, and these are just common people too, all right? Now here this woman comes up here. And he's talking to her. Now, according to the rabbi's teaching, could you talk to even your wife in public? Probably not. No, could not talk to your wife in public. If you spoke to a, a woman that you didn't know in public, it was looked upon as a horrible sin. You could be stoned for it. This woman is extremely surprised. They still follow this stuff today if you have to it you. Yeah. This woman is extremely surprised. Here is a rabbi. He, he is a rabbi, and he's a master rabbi. And, and, and just by the way, he's walking around here doing all these disciples and everything. Now his disciples have gone to get something to eat. Okay? But she's out here, and he's thirsty, and he's hungry. He's been teaching up a storm for weeks, I guess. And he starts talking to the woman, which is very unusual. This is something out of a miracle. This is a fairy tale or something. I mean, she doesn't understand this at all. And she's talking, and she responds to him and says, Why are you talking to me? Why would you want to me even touch anything that you're going to eat? And then he said, If you knew who it was that talked to you right now, you would ask me of living water. Every well and every cistern is what we call dead water. You know what? That's dead water. It's sitting still there. Living water... And all the sacrifices in the Old Testament had to be washed by living water. It had to come from a stream, a fresh stream. Okay? Huh? Flowing. Yep, flowing water. All right, but this well is there. Now, if you knew who I am, you would ask me to give you living water, flowing water. Flowing water. He's going to... I'm going to pipe water into your house, see? Flowing water. Something like they did that back then. But this is really... This woman is jarred with this talk. Now, she knows the Old Testament. She's one of the guys that goes up to Mount Gerizim up over there in Samaria, and they worship God there. And then the first thing she does, this man is a spiritual leader. Hey, you know what I'm going to ask him? Is my religion right? Have I been doing the right thing? So what does she ask him? Hmm? You're not greater than our father Jacob. Yeah. How do you get this water? You know. All right. If you knew the gift of God and who it was said to you, give me to drink, you would ask of Him, and He would give you living water. And the woman said unto Him, Sir. All right. It says in King James. All right. A rabbi. You don't have anything to draw with, and the well is deep. And and from how do you are you going to give me any living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and uh, the water there from himself and for his children and for his cattle? And Jesus answered and said, uh, whoever drinks of this water is going to get thirsty again. Is that true? Yeah. You ever had a drink of water and then a little while you were thirsty again? But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give to him will never thirst again. And shall be a well of living water sprang up until everlasting life. And this woman is blown away. In verse 15. Alright? Before you go on, can I yes. ask a quick question? Back in uh, 9, it says, Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew ask, ask us drink of me? In the Greek, yeah, I mean, it comes comes across as being a little bit contemptuous in, in the English. In the well, first of all, she's... What was the tone of her... Yes. It was. It was she, is, she is angrily yeah. responding to him in anger because she has been looked down upon. Mm-hmm. Not only is she a Samaritan, but she is also a, a fallen woman. She is. I mean, this, this, this woman is a fallen woman and she's a Samaritan, so she's double zip, zapped and jinxed here, okay? All right. Now, she keeps calling him Kyrie. Or kurios. Kyrie is vocative, all right, but it's kurios. In the Septuagint, what is the equivalent of Adonai? How is it translated? Lord. How is it translated? Kyrios. It's Lord, isn't it? Kyrios. 
Now I'm just think of what she's doing here. Well, because I don't, you know, sir. But she's yeah. uh-huh. But she says kudos. And this is equivalent of Adonai. Alright, and that's it. Adonai. And what is the Lord? That means the Lord and it means Jehovah. That's what it's talking to about in the Old Testament. She's beginning to understand. She's beginning to see something here, even before it erupts. She's changed her tone of voice and her whole idea. Something has there's been a transformation in this woman. All right, there's a transformation taking place. Where were we? In what verse? 14. Verse fourteen. Oh, verse fifteen now. And he says to her, uh, uh, toward him, the woman. Uh, yeah, give to me. This, the water. The water is what she says. The water. In order that, I will never thirst again. Nor have to come here to draw. Now every time she came to that well, she was humiliated. Did you know that? People looked down upon her. She would never have to draw here again. And he says to her, you go. And you call the man, your man, your husband. All right? And uh, and you come here. All right? And then what she say? I have a husband. All right. And answered the woman and said to him, uh, Not I have a husband. I'm translating this to you from Greek. That's why I'm rolling wrong here a little bit. And he says to her, Jesus, Well, Kalos, you say... That husband not you have, uh, five husbands you had, and now the one you have not is your husband. All right. Now I'm going to tell you something. There wasn't any marriages on paper back at this at this period of time. All right. Now this woman was living with this man, and they were living as as husband and wife. And the act of marriage is when woman and man come together. All right, but she, he, she wasn't his wife, and he wasn't her husband. Not all they weren't legally married because there were no legal marriages back then. Basically, there were legal divorces, <laughs> and there were legal legal contracts. All right, but this woman is totally amazed at what he's saying. All right? And she said unto him, Lord, you can translate that Lord or Sir, Lord. Just put down Lord. Because that's what she's talking about. She's beginning to call him Lord now. This is not just so at all. She called him Rabbi earlier and now, uh, now the way now, King James translates is it's Sir through the whole thing. But yeah. now she's beginning to call him Lord. Now she's beginning to call him Master. Lord. All right? Because he is... He, he is, she, he's about to be her Lord. I am beginning to understand that you are the prophet. Alright? That you are the prophet. You are the prophet. Now, who was the prophet? The one that was supposed to come. He was the prophet. Alright? Now, one had already come that was a prophet, and he was who? John the Baptist. And he preached, all right? And then when he baptized Jesus, and the word baptized means what? Immerse. Immerse. That's the only thing it means. If they meant sprinkling, Marilyn, what would the word for sprinkling in Greek be? Rontizo. Thank you very much. And if they were going to pour on somebody, what it would be? Nipto. Nipto. All right. <coughs> I know I was going to get it anyway. I might as well get it right straight hand. <laughs> That's my answer, my answer girl right there. He dipped him. John the Dipper. That's who he was. John the Immerser. John the Dipper. Not John the Baptist, but John the Dipper. That's what he did to people. He dipped them. Now, every time, now, dipping, immersing, baptizing was not something brand new, was it? How long do we have in Jewish history? How far do we go back with baptism? How far did they trace baptism? The baptism, yeah. The dipping. 
to Abraham. When Abraham uh, circumcised his people, he also dipped them. All right, and that's where it began. That's where the dipping began, as far. And then also, when they, when they, when their daughters got married, they would dip them. And how do we know that? That, that goes back. That goes all the way back to that ravage Jewish history. All right, Jewish history. All right. Now here we have all this. We have Jesus. He was baptized now, and he's talking to this woman. And which verse are we in again? Nineteen. I perceive that you are the prophet and the fathers of us in this mountain. See, now she begins to... I'm wondering about my religion. Is my religion valid now? Here is the prophet. Now, this prophet is going to tell us all things. Now, she knows who he is right now, even before she speaks in her mouth because she's going to make it plain. She's going to make a profession of faith now. In this mountain, they they worshipped. All right? And uh, ye say that in Jerusalem... It is the place to worship. It's bindingly necessary. That's what she says at the end. All right? And he says to her, You believe me, woman. That is coming an hour when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem they shall worship the Father. All right. Ye worship what you don't understand. What did he tell her? Did he answer her question? You don't know what you're doing there on that mountain. That's the wrong place. You don't know what you're doing here. We worship what we know because salvation is out of the Jews. Salvation is out of the Jews. Salvation comes to the Jews. Was the Messiah going to come to Samaria? By out of Samaria? No. No. Going to come out of the Jews. All right. Verse 23. <clears throat> and we're going to have to quit here pretty soon. I'm going to turn you loose on the rest of the world. But it's coming an hour, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For indeed the Father, such He seeks, the ones worshiping Him. For God is spirit. God spirit. In the, in the in Genesis one in verse two. Where it says there, I think it says in King James, the Spirit of God. What it says there in Hebrew is Spirit God. Ruah Elohim. Spirit God. Not the Spirit of God, but Spirit God. Okay? And that's the same term that he's using here. Spirit God. All right? Spirit, the Spirit God. And the ones worshiping in spirit. And in truth, it is bindingly necessary to worship. And uh, the woman says to him, <clears throat> I know that Messiah is coming, the one being called Christos, Christ. When he comes, that one, he will announce to us all things. And then what did Jesus say to her? And this is one of the only places in the New Testament he says this. This is a special woman. This is one of Joseph's children. What's he say there? It says, I'm the one. All right. The one speaking to you. And this is very beautiful too. And he says to her, the Jesus, I, I am Ego Amy. Exodus 3.14. Who spoke to Moses? Septuagint. Ego Amy. He quoted the Septuagint to her. Exodus what? 3.14. He quotes to her Exodus 3.14 in the Septuagint. All right. Same thing in, in Hebrew, but he spoke it to her in Greek. He would have said it otherwise. He said, I, I am, Ego Amy. Now, look and see what kind of response she gives to him. All right. And he says to her, Ego Amy, the one, La Leon, to you, I am, I am. Exodus three fourteen. I am the one. Did they believe the this? Uh, did they believe the Pentateuch there in, in Samaria? Yeah. yeah, they believed it. They kept it hook, line, and sinker. They believed that they wouldn't accept any of the rest of the Old Testament. Just as, just that. But where did he quote from? The Book of Exodus. All right, three fourteen. He tells her that I I I am the one speaking to you. 
And then about this time, the disciples came. <clears throat> and they and they were, they kept on marveling, it says here. They kept on being struck out of their minds. Who were? The disciples. Because he was talking to a woman. Man. The word lalon there, what does lale, there's words uh, lego as I speak, and laleo, which means I speak also. But lego means to put in a row. It's like the word dabar in, in, in Hebrew, all right? To line up. And lego is the same thing. It means to line up words in a row so you can understand. But what does the word laleo mean in Greek? Marilyn? Huh? It's beautiful right here. It's really important. We had God in the whole Testament, but now we have Him in person speaking through human language by human speech. That's what it means. Laleo means to, is the, uh, to use the human form of language so they can communicate. Laleo. All right. Doesn't that mean to use everything? Everything. Tongue their tongue, mouth. lips, mouth, teeth, throat, voice box, everything. This is the whole thing. I'm speaking to you tonight by way of the same manner that Jesus was speaking to her. I am God, Jehovah, and I am speaking to you now by way of human speak. The woman's blown away. This is God in the flesh now speaking to her. And now about that time, here comes the church to witness it. And they're marveling also because hey, they're, they're Jewish. Why is he talking to this woman? All right. Now we have the calling out of the church. And that's where we're going to end up this week. Right there, the calling out of the church. And we're going to understand a few more things about it. What is the word? Ecclesia. What does it mean? One's called out. Is it in existence here? Does it exist now? This yes. is before the day of Pentecost. Is the church in existence? Yes, because, because the one who called them out was the anointed one. Yeah. So he's I don't know what the difference is in Greek between Messiah and Christ. It's, he's, it's quoting Hebrew. Okay, it's quoting Daniel 9, 25, probably. The anointed huh. Mashiach. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the difference is between Messiah and Christ. Christos, Christos is a Greek word for Messiah. Messiah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the anointed one is going to be Hamashiach. Out, so it's valid and yeah. The Messiah. Hamashiach. All right. The so Messiah. That, so you have the called out ones before the church? It is the church. A lot of people start the church on the day of Pentecost. The church was way over here in Christ's ministry. It's already in existence. What did the church do? What was the first gift placed in the church? What was the first gift placed in the church? What was it? Apostolos. Apostles. When did he put the, he, when did he put the, the apostles in the church? Was that before the day of Pentecost? So then at Pentecost... Now, did the church ever baptize before Pentecost? Yeah, John John did. That's right. No, not with John. They baptized more than just more people than John. Oh, yeah. All right. Did the church have a treasurer before the day of Pentecost? Sure. Yeah, Judas. Yeah, Judas. <laughs> All right. I just want, did they ever have an election before the day of Pentecost? Election? Like yeah, an election. How did they elect anybody? Yeah, yeah they elected uh, one another apostle. <laughs> All right. They did a lot of things before Pentecost. But now just, just we're going to get to the end of this next week. When Moses got all the material and they built the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle is a type of Christ primarily, but it's also a type of church in the church age. When this thing was completely built and erected, it was already there. Okay? Now, what happened to this church there in the wilderness? The Shekinah glory came and engulfed it. It immersed it. All right? It was already there. It already existed. What happened in the in the temple? After the temple was completely built, it stood erect. The Holy Spirit came upon the temple after it was built. Now, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes upon the church that's already there. He told the church, you wait there for me. And what came upon them? The same Shekinah glory that was on the tabernacle here, the same Shekinah glory that came on the temple and the same Shekinah glory that walked with him all the time through his ministry. But now he came upon them in the Spirit. I just got it. You got it! <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were There's a time element in learning. Yeah. So that's why earlier, I can't remember who was filled with the Spirit. 
uh, before Pentecost that was still... Okay, well, all through here, people were indwelt by the Spirit of God. All through here, every believer was indwelt by the Spirit of God. What came upon the church here was not the Spirit of God as indwelling every believer. They all believed in John the third chapter when Jesus was raking Nicodemus over the over the coals. He says, you don't know what being born again is? What being born again is to a Jew? What was born, being born again? Being birthed again. Being birthed again. But what did it mean? That was a common term. Had Nicodemus ever dealt with anybody and told them they were born again? Sure. He sure, sure should have. He Every proselyte was born yeah. again. They took a proselyte and they did him. And he died to his old Didn't nationality, ethnic background, and was raised anew unto a child of Judah. Didn't they shave the all Yeah, they shave all the off like he was a baby again. And everything else. And they would baptize them. And they would be raised anew. They would die to their old ethnic background and be raised anew. And that's when they said they were born again. All right. Born again. In, my life, in John, you didn't mention Nicodemus 3 and 4, it's a Samaritan woman. And in the middle of that is John 3.16. Uh-huh. We have it all there. Isn't that beautiful? Now when you start looking at these things, the Bible just comes alive and you just say, Ha! Ah! You know, King James just doesn't do John 4 justice because it leaves out it leaves out the tone of the conversation and it also makes it so that if you don't know the the scriptures from anywhere else in the Bible, you won't get everything out of it with the way the King James presents it. When uh, <clears throat> when they used Hebrew in, in, in the New Testament, they quoted Hebrew. And there we have it in this in this verse. It quotes it. When it is quoted in Septuagint, it quotes the Septuagint. It's the Bible is beautiful. It is so perfect. And in Greek you see this. And in Hebrew you see it. Well it's just the transition from her calling him rabbi to yeah. her calling him Lord yeah. and it's and it's stated as Sir all the He way comes from, he he is he is he goes from a rabbi to Ad Adon and then to Adonai. And we have and this is the Lord of heaven, King of Kings, and he becomes her Lord. Biblical Hebrew today is more uh, akin to the to the biblical Hebrew than it ever has in history. And every and this is right at the right time, isn't it? That would be like the that would be like the Greeks today. I can go and I can read the Bible and I can speak the Greeks and they wouldn't even know what I'm saying today in in Greece. But it's a total different language. The language has evolved totally different. I, uh, <clears throat> I've had a lot of Greek friends. I've had Greek people come to my Greek classes and, and everything. They sit here like this. and say, man, they don't teach that in Greece. You know, what you're teaching, the etymology of the words and everything, it just blows them away. And then the tenses and, and the voices and, and, and uh, modes and everything that you get into in that. And, and they'll just say, man, they don't teach that in, 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 in Greece. But you, when you take the Word of God, it is so important because the Bible, the inspired living Word, is in Hebrew and it's in Greek. Everything else is a translation. Can I ask a quick question? To yes. For our belief, when Jesus, you're talking about tone and, and emphasis and what was actually going on in the conversation when Jesus first comes there and he says to her, Give me a drink. I mean, huh. what it says in the Hebrew, it's, it's pretty devoid of emotion, it's like command form woman give me a drink how, do, how does it come out in the Greek it's basically the same thing yeah, I, but except it's a request it's a request but it's, it's yeah, a request he doesn't, he doesn't say or please or anything yeah it's just give me a drink so I was yeah. curious can you, it says, can you, are you able to give me a drink, is what he said there. Are you able to give me a drink? Yeah. Are you able to give me And she's surprised that he even spoke a word to her. First of all, being a rabbi, now he's on the other end of the stones. 
because they would stone him if they'd have done if, if they would have seen him publicly do this. His disciples are totally blown away by seeing him talk to a woman. This is an immoral act to them. Weird. To us today, unless you realize back and go to the customs of the day, you don't understand that. But Jesus is dealing with a child of Joseph. That rejected one. All right, let's have a word of prayer and I'm going to turn you loose on the world. Go out and do something eternal this week. <laughs> brother David, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we have to come and to worship you and to learn more about you, Lord. We just thank you that the, for the power that you've given us in words, Lord, that, that we might learn more of you. Lord, help us to uh, go out and to give this knowledge to others. Help us to witness to those who don't know you, Lord. Uh, we just pray for Brother Jim and his family that you give them strength in the week to come, Lord. We just ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 I remember, David, the first time, one of the first few weeks you came to my class, I taught on the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Nicodemus. You remember that? Yeah, I do. Remember that? That was. I'd just gone through a teaching with Uncle Wally huh. uh, just prior to that. His take was totally different than yours. <laughs> but it came from the Word, didn't it? Yeah. Thank you.